Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 13th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Orlando, Florida. Brad today is writing about the latest crypto ransomware that he's observing in his environment. Now, as usual, the initial link arrives in an email the user has to click on it so no attachment in uh, these emails and the user is then tricked into downloading a fake office plugin this particular ransomware is actually virtual machine aware so it will not run in a virtual machine which of course does hinder reverse analysis somewhat Brad for now is calling this ransomware mole based on the extension it's giving encrypted files. And recently, Netflix started streaming its videos over HTTPS with the idea to protect the privacy of its viewers and not allow anybody observing the traffic to deduct what videos you are watching. But as pointed out by a paper just published by researchers from West Point, it's still possible to figure out what movies you're watching based on artifacts in how the data is being transmitted. Videos that you're watching online are typically using variable bit rate encoding. What this means is that the video stream is compressed and then your browser or whatever client you're using to watch the video is sending individual HTTP requests, essentially downloading the next piece of the video. Because of this variable encoding, the size of these pieces varies. And this is exactly what this paper is after by looking at the distribution in chunk sizes that you're downloading from Netflix, it is actually possible to figure out what video you're watching. Now, these researchers did catalog 40,000 different Netflix videos. They didn't watch them all. They actually did create a script to automate the collection of these fingerprints, which is helped by the fact that at the beginning of the file transfer, the client actually retrieves a list of all the chunks so you don't actually have to download the entire video to retrieve these fingerprints. Their algorithm did achieve an accuracy of about 99% in the samples that they looked at. The basic problem they're really dealing with here is very common with encryption if you're dealing with compressed data. How well data compresses allows you to deduct some properties of the data that is being transmitted. So whenever you're in compressing data, then encrypting it, it can be possible to deduct at least some properties of the encrypted data. A possible workaround would be that the client would download not not just always the same segments, but very somewhat how it's downloading the segments, uh, maybe downloading partial or multiple segments with individual requests. And with this it, would, this, it would at least be more difficult to assemble these fingerprints. And today's weird internet connected thing is a stove that's actually not necessarily directly connected to the internet. Instead, it's receiving text messages that are being used to remote control this stove. So this particular stove has a cell phone modem built in and the user will then be able to control the stove using an app on their smartphone, which in turn sends SMS messages. These messages are not particularly authenticated so once the attacker gets a hold of the phone number associated with the stove it will be pretty easy to take control of it to make things worse the web portal that's being used to register your stove isn't built exactly well it does not use HTTPS for beginners but also makes it pretty easy to enumerate phone numbers that are already registered so an attacker would be able to pretty easily enumerate all phone numbers used by owners of this particular stove. And to make things worse, it was essentially impossible for the researchers who discovered this flaw to contact the manufacturer. They actually outline their attempts and, and how they failed to obtain 
obtain a sensible response from the manufacturer about these vulnerabilities. And Google announced it will remove a TLS fallback for Android O, the next big version of Android. What this means is that man in middle attacks will become more difficult because it will be more difficult or impossible to downgrade TLS versions. This is already the case in recent versions of Chrome and Firefox, so it shouldn't really cause a lot of problems. But if you're worried about a particular application, you can check the respective Android blog. Well, that's it for today. In case you're attending SANS Orlando this week, I'll be speaking on Thursday evening about the Internet of Things. So if you can stop by, I'll probably bring a couple of my Internet Storm Center stickers. And that's it. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.